Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for tonight's Tech Talk. My name is Drew Dameron, and I'm the library manager here at the Tokyo American Club. We're delighted to be hosting Daishi Yoshimoto, the architect of the new Tokyo American Club Nihon Bashi, for an inside look into this project. Our club's satellite facility opened just six months ago on March 31st, 2021, and we're joining you now from the beautiful VIP room. Following Daishi's presentation, we'll have an open Q&A session using the questions submitted by everyone joining us virtually tonight. Please use the Q&A button on your screen to submit your question at any time, and I will ask them on your behalf. Thank you. A licensed architect, both in Japan and the US, Daishi Yoshimoto has developed a unique career in architecture that spans multiple cultures and over 28 years of experience. Born in Tokyo and raised in Panama, Yoshimoto is a graduate of architecture programs at the University of Florida and University of California, Berkeley. His professional career started at Takenaka, one of Japan's top design builders, where he designed some of the company's most high profile projects, including the French Embassy Redevelopment and Tri-7 Roppongi. While at Takenaka, he was briefly stationed in Qatar for the new international airport project there. A founding member of the Japan chapter of the American Institute of Architects, or AIA, he served as president in 2018 and is currently its representative to the International Region Board. In parallel with his professional practice, Yoshimoto also teaches a design studio at Kokushikan University's architecture program. As principal of Yoshimoto Associates, he continues to work in creating spaces that enrich its context, enliven people's lives, and empowers his clients' vision. Thank you very much for joining us, Saishi, and we hope you all enjoy the event. Well, thank you very much, Drew, for that introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Daishi Yoshimoto. I'm an architect in Tokyo. Um, I have a fortune of uh, leading the design team for Tokyo American Club Nihonbashi. Uh, before I begin my presentation tonight, uh, I have, uh, I want to make a few words of thanks. Uh, first one goes to Tony Kala. Uh, I just learned that he is uh, about his departure from the club uh, was two Saturdays ago. Uh, surprise, but you know, Tony, if you if you're out there watching, uh, wishing you well, and I know you'll be around. So uh, I hope to see you again. And and I ask that you you join the club as a member now. Um, second, thanks to um, Ginger Griggs, who led the uh, task force for the Nihonbashi project. Uh, Unfortunately, Ginger could not join us live tonight. She's in Arizona, where it's 3 a.m. now. And uh, but uh, I just you know thank Ginger for her great leadership uh, through the project. Uh, also, a uh, big thanks to uh, Rie Ishikawa of uh, Mitsui Fudosan. She led the ownership team through the project. Uh, I just want to thank the Mitsui Fudosan group for their, I guess, their generosity uh, for making this club uh, possible. And lastly, but not least, I want to thank my own uh, team members, the design team, and I also want to thank the entire construction team, uh, the Kojima, Tanseisha, and a host of others whose names I cannot mention here, but uh, just, you know, work like this is by no means a, a an achievement of an individual. It's it's a collective uh, effort to make something like this possible. So I want to thank all of you who were involved in the project. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to move a little bit to where my computer is. So by the way, um, I'm also a new member of Tokyo American Club, and I'm really proud and excited to join your great club. Um, I understand there aren't many uh, members who are in the architecture construction industry. <clears throat> so um, I hope my presentation, you will find it uh, fun and entertaining. Uh, because I'm going to walk you through this 20-month uh, journey uh, from the beginning of the project to completion. And the title of my presentation tonight is The Story of Making a Club. So 
Drew, you just gave a thorough introduction of myself. I'll, I'll skip this page, I guess. But the only thing I would add is if if anybody out there has lived in Panama or is a graduate of the University of Florida or Berkeley, I would very much like to meet you in person and, and make friends with you. Um, of course, this also you mentioned this Drew, but uh, I wear another hat, which is AIA Japan. And the only thing I would add here is that, you know, we've been hosting a lot of virtual events lately. And if you log in to aiajapan.org, there is a list of upcoming events, which anybody can join. And we have great speakers from all around the world. And the best part is it's completely uh, free of charge. So I invite everybody to join an AIA Japan event virtually. OK, so I'm going to uh, just quickly show you uh, some pictures of work I've done in the past. So we have an idea of, of what kind of uh, things I've built. This is my, the project in San Francisco, Yerba Buena Lofts. Stanley Seidowitz's office. He's a San Francisco architect whom I worked for for about three years. Um, the French Embassy compound is in, in Minami Azabu, and I was in charge of designing the uh, new embassy building as well as the civil use building, which is a, a condominium sitting on land uh, leased by the embassy. A very unique project. This is the uh, facade of the embassy and its atrium. Um, Tri-7 Roppongi is in Roppongi across the street from Tokyo Midtown. Uh, I was the chief architect for this project. And after I um, moved to UDS, where I was uh, the design director, I my project shifted to more commercial uh, slash hospitality projects, like this hotel in Hamacho, how much is actually uh, walkable from, from here, from Nihonbashi? But uh, it's the interiors of the hotel. I also uh, did the uh, Onsen Ryokan Yuan Shinjuku. This is a, a boutique Japanese style hotel in Shinjuku with an onsen and its restaurant. I, in recent years, I've been doing a lot of uh, residential interiors. This is an example of a condominium lobby that I designed, and this is one of the uh, residential units. So let's talk about Nihonbashi. Um, most of you know that Nihonbashi was the center of commerce in the Edo period, and Nihonbashi is actually a name of this bridge. And this is where all the uh, principal avenues uh, to all parts of Japan originated, right? And this is Nihonbashi today. And this is where, this is the building where Tokyo American Club Nihonbashi is right around here. I don't know if you can see the cursor. Yes, okay. Drew and I are around here right now. So this is the Koredo Muromachi uh, Mitsui building. Um, let me introduce you to the team members, the players who took part in the project. And um, Mitsui Fudosan, uh, the ownership, they own the building. And Mitsui Fudosan and Tokyo American Club were in a management contract. So um, they were kind of the, uh, the ownership management team in the project. Within Tokyo American Club, of course, there's a Nihonbashi task force led by Ginger Griggs. Um, the two companies uh, selected us as lead designer through a competition process. Uh, I was then leading the design team at UDS. Uh, we were the lead designer. So it's it was a three party uh, team, which was, uh, I guess you could say the principal players in the project. Uh, but I should mention others as well, which are, you know, the contractors 
for Kojima, uh, Tanseisha. Also, we had uh, Uchihara-san, which is uh, one of my longtime partner for lighting design. He did lighting design under us, and we had the engineers, and we even had the art curators who uh, selected the work for us. And then we had the DAC and Lend Lease Japan who were supporting uh, the ownership and Tokyo American Club. So this was the team. And let me speak a little bit about the schedule. Uh, very simply put, it's like this. Uh, the project started in late summer 2019, started with a design competition uh, through which we were selected. And then we, we immediately began schematic design. By the beginning of 2020, uh, we were ready to hand over our design to the contractors. So putting in a bid and then uh, hand the documents to the contractors so they can prepare the construction documents and and construct. Now, if you being in any kind of construction project, you know that these three arrows, actually, ideally, they should not be overlapping. But because of the very compressed schedule that we had uh, for this project, everything had to basically overlap. And we, uh, we call this the fast track uh, process. Um, so thanks to everybody's dedication and hard work, we, we were able to complete the project uh, pretty much on time. So Nihonbashi, Tak Nihonbashi finally opened on March 31 of this year. Now, you see the blue line, the very bottom. Uh, obviously, there were challenges with the COVID. Uh, around springtime 2020, we basically switched all the meetings to uh, virtual Zoom meetings. And you know, you can imagine the challenges of doing design meetings uh, on the web. And that was the time before we all got used to this virtual format. But you know, you're trying to show uh, samples of carpet and stone and you know, putting it in front of the camera and you know, asking people what they think. And it's you know, it's hard to appreciate the color and everything. So it was a challenge, but you know, like like everybody, we got used to the, that format and somehow uh, we pulled it through. So in the design competition, um, well, this was the first pictures that I took of the venue. Um, the important thing that I want to note here is that Tokyo American Club Nihonbashi was built in this very space, which was not intended to, to be like a restaurant or, or a fitness center. It was just a normal office space uh, ready to receive a normal office tenant. It had this three meter ceiling, flat ceiling and uh, accessible floors and, and period. So uh, the challenge was, you know, technically to put all the, you know, jacuzzis and the full service kitchen into what is basically an office space. Um, what I like about the space the most was this, the fact that you can appreciate the green and you were, you were up high on the sixth level of this office tower, but uh, you can actually see a lot of green out the windows. I thought this is very nice. And uh, this is because these trees are planted on the fifth level terrace. But uh, I said, well, you know, we need to take advantage of this because this is, uh, this is very nice. Then I was brought to the club in Azabudai. Wasn't my first time, but probably only my third time that I visit there. Uh, got a tour of the club. I remember Tony Kala taking me to the Chop Steakhouse, and, and I remember him telling me, you know, uh, Yoshimoto-san, what you're about to design in Nihonbashi, uh, you should aim for something that's slightly under this. And I, at, at the beginning, I didn't know what he meant, because it's easy when people tell me, you know, you have to exceed this, you know, you have to, you know, top this. But for someone to tell me, you have to aim something slightly under, 
that's a that's a little bit difficult. But later on, I found you know what he meant actually was that the the price for dinner that the guests will pay will be slightly under what people are paying at the shop. But design wise, you know, we always strive for the best that we can, of course. And uh, there's no, you cannot compare design versus design. But uh, size wise, putting in perspective, uh, the Azabudai uh, facility, the clubhouse is, is huge and it's, it's about 16 times the size of Tak Nihonbashi. So, you know, when I started the design process, I said, well, it, I'm not going to uh, build a smaller Azabudai. And while, you know, the uh, Azabudai project is, uh, is a work of late Caesar Pelli, uh, American architect who I admire a lot, but, you know, I'm not going to like bring parts of Azabuda into Nihonbashi and, you know, and uh, make arrangements in a smaller scale. It has to be totally something totally different. And so what does it want to be? That was the first question I was uh, asking myself. Uh, very early in the process, I came up with this concept. Well, I want this to be a home for the TAC family, home for the membership. And I um, listed some words that I thought should be uh, like the guide for our design process. Uh, this space should be welcoming, should be uplifting, upscale, modern and well crafted. Um, there were other words that I also repeatedly kind of used in my presentations and they are you know, words like intimate, cozy, comfortable, inviting, and relaxed. Uh, this is the kind of feeling that I always wanted people to feel when they visit Tak Nihonbashi. So when I, well, home is a large word. What's, you know, what's home? So I started looking for examples and by chance, uh, in that very year that the project began in spring, I had a fortune to, vi to visit this house. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with this, but this is the Gamble House in Pasadena. Gamble House of the Proctor and Gamble, you know, the owners that founded Proctor and Gamble. This is their summer retreat house in Pasadena. When I visited this, it's actually a national uh, landmark. Uh, and very big house, but uh, what's nice about this house is it's it's a huge house, but it feels so cozy and it's consistent in material. So in every corner, no matter where you are in the house, you know, it's the same type of wood and the same detailing, same proportion uh, of, of the furn furnishings and the wall finishes. So, you know, Anywhere you are, you you get this sense of wholeness of being under the same roof, say. And that's a quality that I wanted to achieve at Takni Hobashi. Um, the other, well, this is probably the most iconic American home, but uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water. I also got a chance to visit that and, and I was just stunned by the use of natural materials, especially the stone, which were quarried from the local uh, hills and everything is in harmony. You know, the furniture, the finishing, uh, it's, everything is just perfectly harmonized. And that's another quality I wanted to achieve at Tak Nihonbashi. Junzo Yoshimura, great Japanese architect, I admire a lot. He did this house in Karuizawa. Uh, notice how this is a very small, relatively small house. It's a, it's a small living room and the ceilings are not high, but you know, the pitched ceiling gives such sense of a uh, coziness and intimacy to this small living room and overlooking the garden. So this is a picture that I reference a lot, you know, from time to time I come back to this picture uh, when I look for inspirations in my project. 
Uh, the Japanese houses are known for, you know, always the relationship between the interior and the garden and the way you, you frame the garden with the eaves. So the ceiling, it's not like, you know, in Ihombashi, we have this 15 meter tall uh, ceiling in the winter garden. No, we only have three meters uh, at most, I think. Um, so the proportion has to be right. You know? So I'll talk about this a little bit later, but uh, I wanted to frame the exterior view with the perfect height for the eaves. So this is the early proposal that we made uh, during the competition. Uh, notice that there is no VIP room yet. Uh, that was added a little bit later in the process. But you, you notice how, well, the, the uh, lobby is actually quite different, but uh, this is the gym. Uh, you notice how the pitched roof and the home concept starts to take shape. This is the original proposal. So, you know, we hadn't even had a conversation with the task force yet, but uh, we already had this idea of making the roof or the ceiling the most iconic feature, architectural feature in the space. This is the restaurant and it's it kind of resembles what um, we we built at the end. So schematic design was between September and December. These are just uh, shots of early uh, schemes of the lobby. You know, the, uh, the selection of materials still very rough. Uh, at this stage, we were, you know, like debating whether the floor of the lobby should be like marble or carpet. You know, things like that. We always uh, go through this three-dimensional computer graphics to make sure we get every material in the space uh, feel right. Um, not all of the proposals we made in design were appreciated by the task force. Uh, we had uh, lots of debates, uh, to maybe put it mildly. <laughs> uh, this was one of them. Uh, at one time, we proposed to cover the entire um, corridor wall with this curtain, but uh, Ginger wasn't very crazy about this idea. And I think I'm glad we didn't uh, go through with this. This is another proposal that we made earlier in the project where we proposed to put a big window looking into the gym. And I thought, well, what if you know people in the public area could look into the gym and, and look at people working out? Uh, wouldn't that be nice? But again, you know, it wasn't received very well. And I think at the end, um, it was a good choice that we didn't make this window. But anyway, talk, I'll talk a little bit about lighting design because lighting design is so essential in creating a comfortable space. And again, I team with uh, Uchihara-san, which is my uh, partner in lighting design. Uh, he and I uh, worked to create this concept for Tak uh, Nihonbashi. And uh, of course, you know, we, uh, we did extensive research of a similar projects, uh, hospitality projects, mainly hotels, uh, high-end condominiums, et cetera. Um, here, the diagram shows, you know, during the day, you want the light to come mainly from the ceilings. And uh, at night, you want the light source to be closer to the floor, and that gives a more comfortable ambience. And we also went to Azabudai with the light meter and uh, measured what kind of light quality exists in Azabudai. And, you know, in, in designing the, the Nihonbashi lighting scheme, it was important for us to kind of create a, a benchmark to start from. Uh, simply put, at Nihonbashi, we aim for higher contrast. That means more sparkle elements, uh, higher contrast between the dark and the bright. And uh, so that's a little bit more like unevenness in the lighting quality than, than Azabudai. Uh, some lighting proposals, again, didn't make it to the end, like this proposal for the pendant light fixtures at the lobby and at the uh, 
in this room right here. Uh, maybe can you see this? This is the final uh, scheme for the candle light, which I think is very elegant. Um, we at one time proposed these uh, bracket lights coming off from the wall at the restaurant. So you know, a design process is always never is never a straight line from you know from point A to point B. It's not like like this. You you always go up and down, up and down, and somehow make it to point B. So, um, and so today, um, you know, I'm showing you some process proposals along the way, and uh, I hope you find these interesting. But talking about carpet, okay, Nihonbashi, town of water. So we wanted to incorporate the, the water concept in the carpet design. And we started to look for uh, the water motif, water pattern. Uh, this is one of my early sketches that I made. Uh, I thought maybe we can um, design water ripple into carpet design. So we, um, we were studying a number of patterns with this ripple concept. And this is the final uh, carpet plan for the lobby area is this blue gray gradation with the ripple pattern and the rendering looks like this the the actual uh finished product looks quite like this i'll show you the actual pictures a little bit later uh, we also wanted to incorporate uh some japanese traditional pattern but in a subtle way and this is kiko uh, kiko is translated turtle shell and this is a traditional pattern in Japanese um, common. We, we call it the common gara. It's a traditional pattern. But uh, in all the carpet designs, we want to put a, a touch of Japanese pattern. So you can see in the foreground a slight pattern of Kiko. Uh, same goes for the carpet in the VIP room where I am right now. We were studying the design for the VIP room. And this is the carpet design. Uh, we also studied ways to, to bring that hexagonal, you know, Kiko pattern into the main uh, restaurant. So we were looking for the right material. And we were again studying this in 3D several patterns to make it just right. There's a divider between the lounge and the restaurant. And that also has a Kiko pattern footprint. So in here again, using computer graphics, we're studying what height that should be. OK, so this is the final plan at the end of schematic design. Uh, in parallel, we were going through this process of furniture selection. So again, we were we started with you know uh, defining words, and and down below are the words that we're not aiming for, right? So we wanted something that's sturdy, elegant, plush, and inviting, and not light, casual, delicate, or cold. So this became like our our guide in selecting the furniture. So I'm showing you, uh, you know, some of these furnitures did not make it to the end, but uh, just to show you the kind of process that we go through in in design, um, we define the concept first, and then we we uh, define words, and then we start looking for the for you know things that match the original concept. Some of these furnitures are uh, originally designed, so we started sketching uh, chairs, tables, uh, benches, and etc. Okay, art selection. And at Takni Hombashi, we have these ten artists from from all over the place, but mainly, of course, Japan and the US, but these artists all have either 
they're either Americans or are American Japanese or are Japanese but have done work in America. You know, they all have some connection to America. And this is the, the art plan. Um, I'm not going to go into de very much details, but it's a very nice collection of you know some of the finest artists uh, that are that that whose work were available. Uh, especially, I would like to mention Francis Shingo, who did the art for this room. And maybe Drew, you can just pan slightly and show the art behind me. So this is the original sketch that Shingo did for us. Uh, and, uh, we were testing the color of the upholstery for the furniture versus Shingo's art. So this is the end product. This is where we are right now. Uh, beautiful piece. Oh, the blue art is on your side. So you're watching the, the other side of the room, but uh, we were debating at the bar what to do with the end wall here. You know, it was originally it was just a blank wood wall. Well, what if, you know, I at one time proposed this wall to be like an acoustic wall with some interesting pattern like this. Oh, we had such long debate over this wall, but at the end we uh, what we built was this archive wall where, you know, the club can display uh, pictures all pictures from the past and I, I thought that was an excellent idea and you can you can keep adding pictures and this wall can can grow in the future it's very nice so design was complete by end of march i'm gonna just zoom uh zip through final renderings that we put out to bid for the contracts to contractors to to bid and then start preparing the construction documents um, the construction began sometime in May. Uh, I'm going to show you pictures of the construction site. You know, ceiling for me was the most iconic piece in this club, and it was interesting to see the progress uh, every time I come to inspect the site. This is a picture of a ceiling mock-up. You know, the detailing is extremely important for us uh in this case how to make the ceiling panels look thinner and lightweight uh was very very important so we did a number of iterations uh doing these mock-up pieces so here you start to see the bar taking shape and the ceiling panels the veneer getting installed uh, one thing to note, you know, this is an office tower where there are lots of tenants during the day and, you know, the the contractors, the contractors were not allowed to make noise at all during the day. So, so they had to begin their work at 8 p.m. every night and, and get it done by 6 a.m. So all of this work were done uh, at night. This is a gym, the restaurant space start to take place. There's a carpet being laid on the floor. Almost finished. You start to see the, the metal work for the bar on your right. Ah, so there's the task force members in action. Uh, here, uh, Ginger and her team, Alok, Komoda-san, are inspecting a chair mock-up that we built. And, you know, when you when you select a chair and a table from a different uh, manufacturer or, or if they're original design, you, you have to make sure the table is at the right height. So here you see uh, Nori Yamazaki placing a piece of cardboard over the table mockup to to add five millimeters to the to the height of the table. This is an example of how how much care we we put in you know just getting everything uh, right this is a, this is a piece of portal at the entrance just wanted to show you this picture because it shows 
the highest level of, of Japanese craftsmanship. And on this corner here where the two metals meet, you know, these uh, stainless steel sheets have thickness, right? They're 1.5 millimeter. But even that thin sheet, uh, we didn't want to expose the edge. So we cut the edge like a razor and make the two pieces of metal meet in a straight line. So we went through testing. This is uh, the mock-up and the final tests were done in the factory in Hokkaido. There's Ginger in action again. She's uh, inspecting one of the light fixtures with the light designers. And in here, she's on the job site. Um, again, you know, I, I, towards the end of the project, of the, of the construction, I think we had regular uh, construction site tours uh, with the members of the task force uh, about you know once every three or four weeks to to uh, watch the progress of the work. Some sketches that that I did on site. Uh, one interesting thing about the finish, which I think it's uh, it's very well done, is this curved wall with a stone finish. You know, usually when you finish stone, a curved wall with stone, uh, the stone are flat, so they are in facets, right? Because but because we wanted a perfectly round, smooth, uh, round stone wall, we asked the stone people to to slice the wall, the, the wall stones in radiuses, so when they're fit in the wall they make a perfectly round radius wall. So just a detail in design that uh, next time you visit the club, I would like you to maybe inspect in detail. Um, more pictures of the construction site, almost ready to go, uh, almost ready to receive the furnitures. And here is the final day before handover. There's Tony, and Antonio at the lobby inspecting the light fixtures. And here we are at the, uh, at the VIP room, final day. There's Ishikawa-san from the Mitsui Fudosan team um, talking with uh, Ginger. So from here, I would like to show uh, just the uh, pictures of the completed club, and these pictures were taken by um, the top photographers, architectural photographers that I that I team with a lot. And just you know, sit back and enjoy the slides because these photographs are works of art in, in themselves. Uh, they're very high quality pictures. This is the main entrance. Um, some more light. And this is what you see when you enter the club. And, you know, as I said in the beginning, I wanted to create something that feels like a home, like a home that's attached to the ground and not. So I didn't want people to feel like they enter a space within a big office tower. You know, immediately when you enter the club, um, I wanted people to feel like they enter a clubhouse that's on the ground. And I think the ceiling design um, contributes to, to that feeling. Another angle, the lobby. Ah, there's Antonio. And another thing that I'd like to note is we like taking pictures with and without people because you know sometimes you won't you need pictures without people but just having a people person in a picture gives such sense of scale and uh, intimacy so antonio thanks for playing the the model role during the photography session there's him and my partner ayako modeling for the photographs. 
some more shots of the entrance lobby. You see the ripple pattern on the on the carpet. A beautiful uh, gradation from blue to gray. Original, originally designed pendant lights. Uh, the biggest one being 1.2 meter in diameter. So these are pretty big uh, light fixtures hanging from the ceiling. The overlapping panels of ceiling and the indirect light um, is for me the most important detail and feature of the space. And here you see that in, in detail. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, art. This is by uh, Shinohara-san. He's, uh, I think he's about 90 year old. He's actually a, a boxer slash artist. And um, the way he makes these art is he puts paint on his boxing gloves and starts punching to the canvas. Canvas, and and that's his art. And what a what a fitting uh, piece of art to to put in a in a gym entrance. And a lot of machines in the gym. Uh, James Fink, uh, I think he was he played a key role in selecting uh, these uh, state of the art. Uh, machinery, uh, work, workout machines. I don't know much about the workout machines, but I know they are of the top quality and all of them are of the latest models. Well, putting a free weight area in an office building was a huge challenge. Um, and especially when you have a bank on the floor underneath. And, you know, we were not allowed to make create any noise for them. And so we actually had to pour another layer layer of concrete slab on top of the existing concrete slab to, to thicken up the, the floor and to dampen any, any noise and vibration from the free weights. So you, you can, you know, you see the, the kind of challenges that, you know, the technical challenges that, that uh, we, uh, we had to deal with. This is the gym locker room and the jacuzzi area. And now there's that round wall in the finished state that I was just talking about some minutes ago. Um, the, the long hallway leading to the restaurant is a gallery. So you see work of art, photo photographic art and some paint art along the corridor. You turn the corner on your left, the wine cellar um, carries, you can put about 600 bottles of wine. And in front, there's the bar. And again, um, Kaori and Dash, uh, they were kind of kind enough to, to come out and model for us. So this is the, the main bar. This is another shot of the bar looking back to the archive photo wall. Looking at the bar from the reception desk. Uh, all the metal work is it in uh, brass color and the brass and the ceiling. I forgot to mention the ceiling uh, wood is is actually um, black walnut from North Carolina. And I really wanted to bring uh, some material that you know that American most Americans are familiar with, and and I wanted to do that on this very iconic ceiling. So uh, it was nice that we could source uh, black walnut from North Carolina in, in this quantity for the entire project. There's the originally designed uh, wine cellar round racks. Looking back at the bar from the lounge, and this is the restaurant. It's a restaurant during the day. Uh, very bright lights, a lot of a lot of light from the window. It's very nice. And you see the work of art on the wall. There is a private dining room 
in case you have not noticed, you can think you can, you know, rent this and have your private functions in this room. Even the toilet and even these little signages are, are originally designed. Nothing, almost nothing, say, is, is off the shelf. This is the entrance to the VIP room, and the name of the VIP room is 1673. And what that is, is that's the year the Mitsui family uh, founded their business in Nihonbashi. The, the original business was the, uh, the kimono uh, store. And so 1673 is a very special year for the Mitsui family. And there's the reception desk at the VIP room. And there's Gan Kaori san uh, model for the picture. So I end my slideshow with this shot. And I'm hoping to see all of you at TAC Nihonbashi very soon. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much, Daishi. It was a really interesting presentation. If anyone online has any questions, feel free to use the Q&A function to submit them, and I'll ask them on your behalf. I did get a couple from Ginger Griggs, who is the chair of the task force, and she was interested in just a couple of insights that you had kind of before and after. So for you, during this project, what was the most exciting moment and what was the most difficult aspect of the project on the extremes? Right. Um, well, like I um, like I said, you know, the exciting moments were the construction phase, obviously, for I think for any designer, for any architect, the construction phase, every time you visit the job site, you know, there's physical progress. You see the ceiling getting built, wall finishes. So every moment during a site visit for me is the most exciting uh, experience. Um, as far as challenges, difficult moments, well, um, it's, you know, it's typical for any project to go over budget and this was no exception, right? Um, original estimate by the contractors were um, something like, you know, 150 percent or some, something in that range of the of the uh, of the budget. And so the process of bringing that down uh, was challenging. And although everybody was in a very positive cooperative mode, uh, we had an excellent team, very professional team. And uh, I would say um, it went relatively smooth uh, to, to, to bring everything back to track as far as budget and schedule. And that despite the challenges that we were facing with the pandemic and, and everything else. Thank you. And if a young project manager is thinking about taking on a project like Techni Hombashi and they came to you for advice, what kinds of things would you tell them? Well, interesting question. And I think uh, what I would tell him is you need to be very mentally tough because uh, I'm going to bring I'm going to bring the uh, the team structure. You know, when you have a team this complex with this many players, uh, it's it's such such a challenge to make everybody happy. And I think uh, the project manager play a very vital role um, in in coordinating uh, everybody's interest at the very high level. So uh, that's that would be my advice to just be uh, very mentally tough. Mentally tough. <laughs> Some yeah. endurance is necessary. Yeah. But you also have to have not, not just be mentally tough, but you have to have a positive kind of uh, attitude towards a project. You always have to uh, start from the mindset 
that you you want to make the project better, you know, despite all the challenges and difficulties. Was it unique for this project to have so many different groups that were coordinating together? It was unique because, uh, you know, usually the the people who um, who are paying for the project are also, you know, directing the design. But this is a very unique case where, like you see in this diagram, um, you know, on one hand you have, you know, the the management team, the Tokyo American Club, um, leading the design efforts. On the, on the other, you have Mitsui Fudosa, who's responsible for keeping things strictly on budget and and strictly uh, on schedule. So, you know, the I, I could if I shift too much to the right, mm. then you know I don't get a lot of happy faces from the left. If I shift too much to the left, <laughs> likewise. Um, that was a very unique situation uh, for this project. I know in our correspondences, Ginger Griggs was particularly impressed with your ability to liaise between these groups. <laughs> Another question from her. It's a lovely testament to the camaraderie and sense of accomplishment among the extended project team that both you and Ishikawa-san, the Mitsui Fudo-san project manager, joined Techni Hombashi when it opened. What goes through your mind now when you visit the club as a member? Well, you know, for any any building project, you know, if if the us, the design team, did any contribution to the project is 50% at most, right? And the remaining 50% is the the operating team and and the great service that and the American Club is known for great service. And when I visit the club as a member, I'm always so impressed at the quality of service. So um, visiting the club as a member is, is such a uplifting experience for me. It's, I start looking for things, you know, architecturally, but uh, I try to to not look too much at those things and just uh, enjoy uh, great service by the great staff of the club. I'm sure it feels different too now that it's past the project planning stage, now that it's here and, and running with everyone inside. One more question from Ginger. What one thing would you love to hear members say about the club when they visit? Yeah, Techni Hombashi. Well, I want members to just say, wow, you know, and then, uh, I would like people to say, well, this is this is very cozy. This is very comfortable. Um, you know, those words that that I set out at the beginning of the project and uh, I, I want the members visiting to to actually um, feel the feel that way and, and say those words that will be a, a compliment for us. Are there times where you're sitting with a list of keywords and listening for them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be funny. Yeah. <laughs> so another question that came in was about the art collection. Mm -hmm. uh, the process of working with the curator and the task force to acquire pieces for the collection, some of them being uh, specifically commissioned and some of them being added in later. Were right. They a part of your design process, like when you were planning this VIP room, did mm -hmm. you already have an intended idea of what would go where, or are you just spatial dimensions? Uh, spatial dimensions, basically. And, you know, these are commissioned art. So uh, Shingo Francis made these especially for this space. And when, when we ask any artist to do art for you, uh, you know, I think we should not try to, to put forth too many requests, you know. We should let the artist um, do what they feel it's right, you know. So it, it's work of art. There's no never right or wrong. So for for these art, you know, the only I guess thing, the only thing that we uh, provided to Shingo Francis was just the plan and the elevation drawings of the space. And he he well took the this uh, proportion, the long proportion of the space 
and the water motif and made it into a piece of art. So uh, I think it was a um, very successful process, I would say, to to let the artists uh, express themselves um, without you know too many requests and, and comments. And then one more question from someone joining us online. Uh, if I want to study architecture when I'm older in college, what can I do now to prepare? Oh, good question. Um, wow, I, I don't know how old that person is. Um, probably as old as I am, but uh, architecture, you know, when I was in architecture school, my professor said, you're not going to be calling yourself an architect until you're 50. Because architecture is a profession that uh, you can you can only you know acquire your skills through experience. So what I think what he meant was you know you need you need to be about fifty to gain enough experience to call yourself an architect. I'm fifty one now, so I I think I, I can start to call myself an architect. But you know architecture is is that kind of profession is is a lifelong profession. Uh, professions and so I'm 51 and I'm like a, I'm a, like a, just starting my career right and and it continues um, until I until I, I die so, so for for that person aspiring to go to college for to study architecture by, by all means and you know just visit all the great uh, examples of architecture, work of architecture that exist in our world, and uh, and uh, just uh, I guess uh, keep your love for architecture, and uh, I think studying architecture will be very 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 fun for you. Thank you. It's like that was our last question for the moment. Can you tell us a little bit more about the AIA events? AIA events, sure. Um, AIA Japan is again a chapter of the American Institute of Architects. Uh, we are 90, 90 members strong in Japan. So we're relatively small compared to the other um, international chapters of the AIA. You know, for example, Hong Kong, Shanghai, they have. 300 members and so, so while we're small because everything went online in a virtual format because of the pandemic uh, we are able to reach so many people now all over the world so some of the events that we host online we get people you know from Europe Africa South America uh, we we get 100 people uh, online so uh, please uh, log, log in to AIAJapan.org. Uh, really, the quality of the events are superb. And I think even if you're not you know, in the architecture, design, construction industry, I think you really enjoy our shows. Thank you, Daishi. Free of charge. Especially for the younger viewer who asks the question, please take a look and sign up for a couple of the events. By all means. All right, on that note, thank you very much, Daishi, for spending your time with us tonight and telling us more about this project. It was very, very interesting. It was an honor and pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you, everybody.